Thank you very much indeed and a very warm welcome to all of you at home wherever you may be watching across South Africa and indeed the many territories that are watching on DSTV across Africa as well. Uh, September is Heritage Month in South Africa and uh, one of the things that we like to do in Heritage Month is celebrate uh, some of our fine institutions uh, that uh, form very much a part of our uh, heritage, our traditional heritage, and traditional leaders uh, is uh, one of those uh, institutions that uh, we enjoy uh, right across the country. And in fact, the Constitution has worked very hard to make sure that their role uh, is uh, preserved and enhanced over time. A couple of other institutions as well uh, that uh, we'll discuss during the course of this conversation. But what role do they play in 2016? Are they ceremonial or do they actually have uh, power to do real things to contribute to the communities in which they serve? And also, I suppose, at the end of the day, helping to move South Africa forward. Well, we have a number of guests that I'm going to introduce to you, but uh, the first guest is the Minister of uh, Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, who's uh, joining us to talk to us a little bit about uh, government and uh, the role that they play uh, uh, in dealing with our traditional leaders. So Minister Desmond Royan, thank you very much for joining us and welcome to you. Thank you very much, Peter, and a very good morning. Next to you, we have the Deputy Minister of COGTA, um, Deputy Minister Obed Bapela. Thank you very much for joining us and welcome to you. I know that traditional affairs and issues uh, are one of your uh, main focus points as Deputy Minister. We look forward to uh, hearing from you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much and good morning to viewers of SABC and Morning Life. And uh, apart from some in the audience. We also have on panel some traditional leaders that are going to share their experiences and their thoughts and perhaps some of their concerns and some of the things that are working for them. Uh, the first two that we have, uh, we have Ahosi Nwamitwa. Uh, Thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, and welcome to the program. And next to you, we have Jose Pilani. Thank you very much uh, for joining us and welcome to you as well. Thank you very much, Peter, and welcome to your viewers. All right, so uh, let me start with you, Minister. Um, we've just, we're coming towards the end of Heritage Month. Traditional leadership is uh, a very important uh, pillar of uh, our heritage. And I just wonder your thoughts in terms of um, your department uh, and the work that it's been doing to try and make sure that our traditional leaders have their rightful place uh, in a modern society. Thank you, Peter, once more. Uh, let me take this opportunity to really appreciate uh, the fact that you have invited us I mean, to deal with this important uh, matter. But also let me welcome my, my fellow panelists and, uh, of course, uh, a very good morning to all I mean, those who are in the audience and uh, your viewers uh, at home. Indeed, as you know, I mean, this uh, month is the, the month that we refer to as the, the Heritage Month. And the month accords us an opportunity to celebrate uh, our, our diversity in our cultures, in our heritage practices, you know. Now, to take forward this particular aspect, uh, our government have a ministry that is called uh, COCTA, mm -hmm. which, which, which is uh, comprised of uh, a co cooperative governance as well as traditional affairs. So at the center of uh, the, the mandate of the traditional affairs uh, department is to make sure that uh, issues of traditional leaders as well as issues of heritage are taken care of. Mm -hmm. So we do this working together with the traditional leadership uh, sector. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we do this with a full knowledge that the traditional leaders are a custodian of our customary laws and customary practices, as well as our heritage. And definitely, we think that uh, this sector uh, got a, still got a very, very big role to play in terms of ensuring that we maintain, but also promote our customary practices. And that's why we, have, we, we, we usually partner with them to celebrate this important matter. And that's exactly what we have done and will continue to do. All right, Deputy Min um, Minister, thank you very much indeed. As I turn to you, Deputy Minister, and you, this is something that's quite close to what you do uh, as an area of focus. 
And I'm just wondering, in 2016, how, how do we balance a modern society, a modern constitution, and the uh, traditional role that uh, traditional leaders have been playing? What input have you been uh, putting in, and also some of the challenges that you've had to overcome to make sure that our traditional leaders have a role to play, but at the same time, you know, we live in a, in a modern world, inverted commas. Thank you, Peter. Let me just say to South Africans, we have 829 traditional leaders in South Africa across all national groups, and also 10 kings that we also have. That's what South Africa has inherited, and in South Africa is molding, and we are beginning to look at the sector too. Mm. Indeed, include tradition, culture, customs, but at the same time, to also look at modernity. Mm. And they are there, we cannot wish them away, and the Constitution enjoys and compels us to recognize them as in Chapter 12. Now, with that recognition and the constitutional obligation, ours is to then pillar one to strengthen the sector and the institution itself that is there. Secondly, the, the customary role that traditional leaders plays is about preservation, protection, and promotion of our culture's heritage, including the cultural heritage, which is part of the tourism. Let's then begin to identify all sites. There were over 2,000 hours in South Africa since 1652 up to liberation. Are those sites been identified, modernized, so that people can visit and go and get the story of how, where South Africa comes from, where it is and where it's going? Mm. The other pillar is on the social cohesion and nation building. They are, as part of the, 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 the custodian, the restorers of Ubuntu. Uh, and Ubuntu is about our manners, our behavior, our conduct, humanity, uh, as you will all call it. And I think that is a very big agenda that will contribute to social cohesion and nation building. And the last pillar is around economic, uh, socio-economic activities. Remember, traditional leaders themselves were, were, were once wealthy. They were a government and they will till the land, yeah. they will produce from the land, they had cattle then as a form of wealth, and everyone was, uh, was, was benefiting from that particular system. Now with democracy, obviously, we had to then allow democracy to take space, but they are still there, and then they have land, and we need to utilize that land for continuously produce more from the land. And there's a lot of mineral wealth that is coming, and Jose Pilan, I think, will speak about it, and Jose Nwamita will speak more about the agricultural product that they are already doing, mm -hmm. and then delivering to the market today uh, the goods that come from the soil. And then on the mining side, Jose Pilan is even building a city in Murula, uh, Muruleng, uh, uh, and, and then that's where he is. And a new stadium has been built there, a new heritage site has been built, yeah. modernized. So then, therefore, that be indicates to you that where wealth is and it discovers in traditional land, yeah. we will then begin to marry the two, democracy and modernity, and including the heritage and cultural aspects. Okay. Well, let's uh, speak to our royalty that's with us. Um, Jose uh, Tiniko, um, uh, of the... You're the Jose of the Valoi, the Nwamitwa people in Zanin in Limpopo. And one of the things that the Constitution has tried very hard to do is gender equality. And it's not often that we see female leaders, female Jose's. And I wonder, uh, in assuming your role, have you found that the Constitution has helped you, A, as a woman, as a traditional leader, um, to be able to do your work? Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, thank you. Let me start with the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, which uh, started with the interim constitution. And it was endorsed in 1996. That has the human rights. And in the human rights chapter, we have got a clause entrenched in it, equality clause. I think that is where we, we start, because you remember women in the time of apartheid uh, uh, and the colonial uh, time, women were perpetual minors. Tr you know, women were triple oppressed because one, as a woman, two, as a black woman, 
three as a, a class where you belong. But with the introduction of the Constitution, women got some relief because the, 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 the customary uh, practices like, for instance, uh, a male primogeniture rule, which only allowed a firstborn of a, a, a Hosi or a Nkosi to uh, succeed or to ascend the throne. The constitution, if we look at it, says no, it's unconstitutional. That is where an opening came to women. I speak, as I say now, the constitution of South Africa and the system of South Africa is no longer the male primogeniture rule. It is the equal primogeniture rule, where you find as a woman, you become a traditional leader. You are able to practice all what is important in your community in a way that the community has to develop so that it must be able to serve the community, to be able to have social cohesion because the people in the rural community depend on traditional leaders and you cannot wish the traditional institution away. Well, I'm used to say a traditional institution here, but usually I want to refer to this institution as a royal institution because you don't have a traditional family, you have a royal family. But nevertheless, I will refer to it as tradi traditional institution. That is where I find that uh, the, 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 the constitution has tried to harmonize the society in particular with re uh, preference to refer to women in particular because it was a class which was left behind. So I have no problems in my uh, community as a royal leader because I enjoy equal rights. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Jose. Um, <laughs> Uh, Jose Pilani, you're the uh, chief of the Bakhatla Khafela tribe uh, in South Africa, but you're also the deputy president of the Congress of uh, Traditional Leaders of South Africa, Contralesa. So perhaps for the uninitiated and those that don't quite understand the role of traditional leaders uh, in, in a modern society, um, and we've just heard Jose here to say that, you know, we can't wish you away, uh, that you play a very important role. Please explain that role. What, what do traditional leaders do for people? Why is it still an important institution in our society? Well, thank you very much, Peter. I think, uh, as Hossi has already indicated, the, the role of, of uh, the traditional leader is governance. It's basically governance, and whatever you think of governance, it's what the traditional leaders have always been doing. And it is de facto doing still, although the current legislation tries to, to avoid that role of, of, of uh, governance. But uh, de facto we're doing it. People are reliant on us and whatever they need which relates to governance, they come to, to the institution or to the traditional leader. So we basically are still performing those functions. And those functions include anything under governance. All right. We Thank will explore a lot of those issues yeah. and also, I guess, some of the challenges that uh, you must face where you had a traditional way of doing things and then the lawmakers came in with new ways and sometimes they don't always overlap very well, but we'll explore that a little bit later on. Uh, Minister, I know that you're going to need to leave us shortly to, to attend a cabinet meeting, but perhaps uh, before you go, just your final thoughts that you'd like to share uh, with us uh, in, in terms of this very important discussion. Peter, the round of the matter is that uh, we, we come a long way, I mean, uh, with this whole process of ensuring that, firstly, we restore the dignity of uh, this sector. Remember, in the past, it was not all traditional uh, councils that were necessarily given due recognition. Mm. Even those who were given the due recognition, uh, that, uh, I mean, the way, I mean, the recognition was, 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 was accorded, I mean, left a lot to be desired. But since uh, the new dispensation, our commitment has been very, very firm uh, on issues of uh, tra traditional leadership. We have uh, moved quite extensively uh, in as far as institutionalizing the sector is concerned. We started by the provision as alluded to in the Constitution, but we moved beyond that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went further to allocate resources 
to deal with issues of uh, restoration of dignity of the sector by appointing commissions which were meant to deal with dispute and claims. I mean, that image in the sector. And of course, that process is still continuing. But we went further to legislate uh, for the establishment of traditional councils, but also for the houses of traditional leaders. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't stop there. We developed also, I mean, uh, uh, a policy that guides on issues of initiation. And uh, of course, that policy now formed the basis of the development of legislation that will continue to guide our country and the sector on issues of initiation. But also, uh, we, we, I, I think quite, quite satisfactorily, I mean, uh, we, we have also moved even to recognize, because the initial legislation didn't have provision to recognize the communities of the Kwe in the sense. But uh, we have moved in that regard, and as a result, we have introduced a bill to deal with that matter. It's just that we are all concerned that uh, the, the parliamentary processes uh, are, taking, are taking some time. But it's our wish that this particular uh, 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 sector should be recognized fully and uh, the, their dignity should be restored. And the other matter is that it's a collaborative effort. And this is what I emphasize from time to time when I meet with royal families. It's a collaborative effort. It's not only going to take one side to get it right. But also what I like, they are the custodian of the heritage and customary practices. So they are the ones that exactly must lead. Our role as government in the main is to facilitate, mm -hmm. but to ensure that there is compliance with all the provisions of our constitutional democracy, but also the harmonization mm -hmm. of traditional practices and the democratic systems of government. And I think, truly speaking, uh, with the commitment that we have shown as government, uh, I think it will be appropriate for me to, to conclude by saying the sky is the limit, and we, we, we are definitely mm -hmm. more than ready I mean, to make sure that issues of traditional uh, leadership uh, sector or institution are taken serious, but also they are elevated to the status that they deserve. And we are more than ready to definitely uh, work with the sector to ensure that the sector uh, dignity and status is restored. All right, just before you disappear, one question. You talked about the allocation of resources. And uh, one thing, and I just want to get an idea of how you decide how these resources are allocated. Uh, Deputy Minister has said there's more than 800 traditional leaders, but it's quite clear that they're not all equal. Some get more than others and are treated as if there's a hierarchy. How do you manage that process? Because I guess, you know, a Hosi in a smaller area is as important to that area as a, a, a king or an Khorsi in another area but there doesn't seem to be an equal allocation of resources. Indeed, uh, I mean, uh, there, there, there are disparities and discrepancies on how we provide for the sector. The result of the matter is that there is a lot of history uh, behind some of these uh, uh, development. And uh, as, 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 as earlier indicated, we are in the process of standardizing and also harmonizing. But the result of the matter also is that it's not going to be an easy process. Uh, uh, and I, I know the traditional leadership also, they have accepted that we are in this thing together and we really need to, to work on this. And uh, we are now trying our level best to create uh, platforms for us to dialogue extensively on these issues. Uh, we are just from the Lokota in KZN, where we were, I mean, uh, of course, deliberating on some of these issues with the chairpersons of various, I mean, uh, provincial houses of traditional leadership. And we are now planning a very big endeavor that is coming around uh, November, uh, where we, we, are, we are roping in the academia, we are, we are roping in the think tanks, I mean, uh, in this particular sector, and trying to establish or to learn from them what is it that we can do to address some of these disparities. The, the, the fact is that disparities are there, and there is history behind these disparities, and we need to deal with those disparities. But also what is compounding matters in our system of government, we do, uh, the president proclaimed around issues of tools of trade, even the remuneration of traditional leaders. But now uh, the, the, the province, in terms of our constitution, prov provincial governments are, are duty bound to ensure that those proclamations are given effect. Now, because of challenges of resources in some of the provinces, mm -hmm and the provisions are not necessarily adhered to as prescribed, you know. And these are some of the things that we are, we are, we are definitely I mean, trying to sort out in this process of standardization and harmonization. 
All right, Minister, we want to thank you very much indeed uh, for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, we know that you have to leave and uh, go to a cabinet meeting, but we thank you for your contribution. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you very much, Peter. And then once more, I wish all the participants a very successful uh, engagement session. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. you so much. All right, we're going to take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, we'll continue to explore some of these themes. At Morning Live SABC, that's our Twitter handle, hashtag TNA Biz Brief. If you have a question that you'd like to pose or a comment that you'd like to make, we'll pick them up on those uh, Twitter handles.